Welcome to the second lesson in learning Zapier in 14 days. I am glad to have you back. Today, we're gonna go a layer deeper as Zoe's taco truck business starts taking off. But what that means is that she needs to start taking orders online. To do that, she's gonna need a form. She's also starting to get a lot of questions about catering, so she's gonna open up a catering part of her business. We're gonna do that with a couple other products at Zapier, Zapier Interfaces and Tables. We go into interfaces and you can see that Zoe's set up a domain where customers are gonna be able to go directly to this order form. She dragged in this photo that she has, put in some simple text, and then added this form. Now Zoe has had businesses come ask her, hey, can you do catering for our next event? Of course, Zoe wants to say yes, but she needs to assess the event, see if she can really tackle it. She's gonna get those leads from her website and then make a decision on what she wants to do. So let's look at how she would set up this workflow and process using Zapier. We'll go back into her Zapier interface and we're gonna create a new page for catering. Once we do that, we'll add in some simple text. We don't need a ton of information from the form. We need just enough to get the conversation going. When you add a form in right away, it asks you if you wanna create a table to store that information. And sure, we can go ahead and do that right now. Now, as we add in fields, they're gonna be automatically added into that table as well, keeping everything in sync. All right, we'll go ahead and add in some fields here. Okay, we can change the button text, submit requests, and we'll keep it at that. Now, once Zoe has this catering form created and businesses are starting to fill it out, there's two things she's gonna want. One, we wanna create an email notification. So you wanna create that zap. And then the second zap Zoe's gonna wanna create is after she's had that conversation and discussed the details with the business and she decides, yes, great opportunity. She may at some point want to add that business into her CRM. Zapier is perfect for all that movement, all that automation that does happen. So let's take a look at how to set that up. We'll go into connections here. We can see the catering table. We'll open that up. So what Zoe's gonna do is have all of her catering requests fill into this table. And then when she's ready to add them into a CRM, she'll just click a button. So we'll add a button field here called add to CRM. We'll click create. Now that we've added the button, we set up the zap, the automation, that's gonna carry all these catering contacts into a CRM or anywhere else she needs to put them. So we're back here in the zap editor. As always, we're gonna test the trigger to pull in some data to work with. We see that one catering request show up here, perfect. And now she can choose her CRM. I see it down here, I'll click it. You choose the event, maybe create contact, create company, something like that. You authenticate your account, and then you map in those fields, like name, email, and anything else you collect from the form. You can test that step, add it into your CRM, and then hit publish. Amazing. Now back in the table, we can see that button is active here. There's a zap link to it, and we can also see what fields are being pulled into that zap. So you have visibility into what's connected to workflows and automation that you set up. So now Zoe is rolling with the online orders, catering requests, her operations are automated and she can focus on those tacos and those customers. But turns out customers have lots of questions and there's nothing wrong with questions, but Zoe's thinking, how can I automate some of that? So in our next video, we're gonna see how Zoe creates a chatbot using Zapier chatbots to have AI look at all of the FAQs she already has and help answer customer questions 24 seven, helping her business grow to even the next level. I'll see you there.